Uh, hello, I hope that you are doing well. Uh, something I've been thinking about for the last couple of weeks is how do we do worship at home? As some of us uh, have never considered the question, or maybe you're actually considering the question right now. Uh, on Sunday, we go to church, and the pastor, me, uh, tells you when to s sit down, when to stand up, when to say this, when to pray that. Uh, everything is, is led. Now, when you miss a Sunday here or there, you might just listen to uh, the message on the internet, and that's awesome. But right now we're sort of looking at three or four months of not gathering together. Uh, we don't know when this is going to end. We don't know what it looks like. And so I was thinking that uh, we probably want something a little more fuller than just listening to the message on the internet. And so I want to give you uh, right now four basics of worship, things that you can include to make your time uh, together fuller and uh, uh, and greater. And so the, the basics are, are prayer, Bible, music, and intention or purpose. So the first is prayer. Uh, prayer isn't doesn't need to be any more complicated than than speaking to God. That's that's what prayer is when we we talk to God. Now. Uh, four aspects or things we might include in prayer uh, are praise, uh, thanksgiving, uh, confession, and uh, a supplication. Praise is when we tell God why he's awesome. Uh, uh, thanksgiving, when we thank God for what he's doing or what he's done. Uh, confession, that's when we admit our sins. We ask for forgiveness. We ask for help uh, with our struggles and our weaknesses. And supplication that's just the big fancy word for asking for things. Uh, you don't have to include everything in a single prayer. You don't have to pray everything all at once. Uh, but those are things that we can include in our prayers. Uh, the Lord's Prayer, you find that in Matthew 6. It's, a, it's, it, it's the list of things that Christians should be uh, praying for. Uh, the second thing or part of a time of worship is reading the Bible. Uh, we pray because we're speaking to God. We read the Bible because through it, God speaks to us. So uh, our times of worship really should always have the Bible involved. Uh, maybe it's the message uh, that I'm preaching that you can uh, listen to online. Or maybe the internet crashes. Uh, open your Bible. Uh, start reading a book. Uh, start at chapter 1 and read a chapter. Uh, and discuss it together with whoever you're with. Uh, let God speak to you through it. Uh, a third basic to worship is music. Uh, with music, we sing to God. With music, we sing to one another. Uh, we sing out our Christian beliefs, and we also listen. Music uh, does a number of things. I'll, I'll just say two things, I guess. Music stirs our souls. That's, that's what it's there for. I don't quite understand it, but that's what it does. Uh, music can also calm our souls, which is which is also awesome. Music can bring us peace that nothing else can bring us. Um, so use music both ways to stir your soul, uh, uh, to bring peace to your soul. Uh, maybe you're good at music and you can sing or your family can sing real well together. Maybe you have some instruments in the house. Or maybe you're like me and you s really stink at singing and that is not your gift at all. Uh, well, we're blessed with YouTube right now, so uh, find some great music, some God-glorifying music, and uh, make it a part of your time of worship. The uh, fourth thing that I think is really important about worship is intention or purpose. Uh, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. And that's really what worship is. We're meeting with our God. Uh, and we have to have, I guess, that intention about our time together. Uh, whether it's a Sunday morning at church, when you come to church, you should have the intention of uh, a meeting with God this morning. Uh, and if you're worshiping alone or you're worshiping with your family at home, that same intention is very important. Um, Moses, when he uh, approached the burning bush, he was commanded by God to remove his sandals because the ground on which he stood was holy. Now, 
when Moses came to the burning bush, he was curious. He wasn't going there for any intentional purpose of worshiping God. Uh, but when he came to that place, God informed him he was meeting with God. And uh, so he had to change, uh, I guess, uh, his, his intention or his purpose. He had to take his sandals off. Things were changing. Uh, now that ground was really just a piece of ordinary dirt in the wilderness. There was nothing particular special about it, except that God was there in a special and powerful way to meet with Moses. And that's what made it holy. So worshiping at home, it sort of means the same thing. Your house isn't special. Wherever you're going to meet in your house isn't particularly special. It's just an ordinary room. Um, but the the fact that you set it apart to meet with God, that you have that intention, that you're gathering in the name of Jesus, that makes it holy and that makes it special. Uh, so treat the time as special. Set a time for it. Let everyone in the house know or in the apartment know we're meeting at this time for worship. We're meeting with God. Uh, so four things. Uh, prayer, Bible, music, and intention. And these are, the f these are the basics. If you like, make a plan. If you're thinking through the week about music that you could include or things that you should pray for together, uh, write them down, bring them. Ask the kids what they would like to sing uh, during your time to worship. Uh, this is stuff that you can do. Uh, you don't need me. I'm not that special uh, to lead you through these things. Uh, I have my part in teaching, uh, but you can do these things at home. I think if you do them, you'll be really blessed. We've got three or four months ahead of us. Uh, make a plan uh, and be blessed by it. Worship God, meet with him. Uh, enjoy the time together.